Hi everybody, today I'm here to talk about the third and maybe the last, although we're not too sure about that because I'll explain a little on that later on after the review is over, edition in the Meet the Parents slash Meet the Fockers series, this one being Little Fockers. Now in the first one we had us meeting the parents of Pam. And the second one, we had us meeting the parents of Greg. So the next step would naturally be to have children, which they do, two children. And this one is called Little Fockers, which is kind of misleading, thank God, because I figured going into this, it would be all about the children, all about kids and all kinds of shenanigans with the, with, with that, with the offsprings. Thank, thankfully, it's not. This is actually kind of mistitled. It's not really about the kids all, all the way. So that's a good thing, but nevertheless... This is definitely the weakest of the three, no doubt about it. You know, I think Meet the Parents was the best. Meet the Fockers was kind of, eh, like that. This one is the least. But, you know, it's not without a little bit of merit if you're into the series, and I'll, I'll explain why. The first time I saw this movie, I say loosely saw this movie, was when I was uh, visiting Maine around Christmas time, and I was staying at a hotel, and the hotel TV had this movie running. This is going back several years now. And I did watch it, or at least half of it, really, and I got a feel of it, and I really didn't dig it too much, so to speak, and I thought, yeah, this is really bad, you know, so I have no desire to ever see it again. Well, I'm glad I gave it a fair shot on Blu-ray and watched it in a dedicated way all the way through from beginning to end, because it wasn't a total washout. If you're, if you're invested in this whole formula um, of, you know, Jack Burns, the crazy ex-CIA guy, and his son-in-law, Greg, and them with their relationship and the strains in it and stuff you can get a little something out of this now this time they throw in a beautiful girl in here played by jessica alba who is absolutely stunning i think she's one of the most attractive women ever uh and i don't think i own any movies with jessica alba in them so uh, at least now i can say that i do because she's very easy on the eyes as they say so that helps and she plays a role in here if i remember correctly it's kind of a, a person who sells uh sexual uh, aids and things like that and she she is involved with the hospital that greg works in as a male nurse and you know that's the essence of that but that makes for some good situations that can be used because in an effort to find something else to not trust greg about with jack burns we actually have him somehow getting the mixed idea that uh having an affair Greg in this uh, Jessica Alba character. So, you know, that, that, that makes the distrust kind of perk its head up. I mean, something has to. They're really trying hard. They're scraping the bottom of the barrel. There's not a lot more to write about in the story here. Uh, the cast returns. You have Terry Polo, of course, as Pam. Uh, you have Blythe Danner as the wife, Jack's wife. Uh, and you do have the return of the Fokker parents. You have Dustin Hoffman and Barbara Streisand, although their time here is very, very limited. There's not really that much here. Uh, good thing they're there. I'd rather have them there than not. But as I understand it, if, if I was reading right, I think Dustin Hoffman it wasn't sure that he was going to be on for this. For, for, I think it was financial reasons and timing and this and that. And finally, they delayed the production of this and release of this just enough to have him film his scenes. So like I say, I'm glad to see Dustin Hoffman and Barbara Streisand in this, but they don't have much to do. Uh, you have Owen Wilson returning as Kevin, who um, he was really great in the first Meet the Parents, that character. And he was sparingly used, if I recall, in Meet the Fockers. In this one, he's annoying as hell. Uh, Owen Wilson makes too many appearances in here. Uh, the old uh, two's company, three's a crowd thing takes on new meaning with this. I mean, he's just really an unwanted extra wheel here, and he makes too many appearances in here for me. Um, but the thing I found with this movie is the first half of the movie, maybe, goes nowhere. And you can see they're just treading very thin water here, trying to figure out what they're going to do with this concept anymore. There's nothing left to do. And it's pretty but by the numbers, you know. But then later on, halfway through, once you, once Jack starts getting suspicious that maybe his son-in-law is up to no good, it starts getting a little more interesting. And there are some funny bits in here, one of them involving, I'll just say, I won't spoil everything, one of them involving a dump truck with filled with dirt, which is the best scene, funniest scene in the movie to me. And then there are things like... Uh, 
well, I'm spoiling this a little bit, maybe Jack Burns and his son-in-law Greg getting into a one-on-one uh, -on -one fisticuffs kind of fight in a child's playground, which has those uh, bins of colored balls that they dive into and fight in the, in the colored balls and all those kinds of stuff. So there, there, there were a couple of moments in here, but they're really, really pushing it and trying to decide what to do with this thing, you know? So, yeah, um, it's kind of, um, yeah, if you're a fan of the other two, I think you'll get a couple of moments out of this. After all, the dynamic that we're interested in is the relationship, I think, between Jack Burns and his son-in-law, Greg. And you can see it taking some changes here with uh, Greg... Uh, kind of uh, getting more assertive against Jack, which is a good, you know, seeing their, their relationship and how it goes. I like a little touch in this movie, if I can say, where uh, Jack no longer trusts uh, his other son-in-law, I think Dr. Bob, I think was his name from the first one. He was so glowingly proud of Dr. Bob. He was his favorite. He found out he's, that he had been unfaithful to, to his uh, other daughter. So because of that, Jack hates that guy now. So he's out of the circle of trust. So that was a nice touch, you know, to see reality. You know, sometimes uh, families break up, don't get along. One guy's that's uh, the golden boy one minute, could be the, the louse the next minute. So that was really interesting. But yeah, that's it. Now, this is easily the weakest of the three. It's easily skipped if you don't care about such things. If you like the whole series, you might as well watch it and get, you get a little out of it. Um, I was curious, so I went online and I said, I wonder if there are going to be any more of these. And lo and behold, to my shock, and in a way, satisfaction, because I, I kind of like want to see what they're going to do with this. Uh, I think it's been about 13 years since this movie was made already. They're all, they're, all the cast is alive and willing and able to apparently to do another one. Suppos supposedly, there's uh, from some of the reports I've read, this is in pre-production stages the next Fockers movie, the fourth one. They're going to do another Meet the Parents, Meet the Fockers movie. See where these characters are at 13 years later. Um, I, I got I to gotta confess, I'm a little bit interested, even though my hopes are like very tiny to see what they can do with this. I saw some kind of a uh, live feed of them with everybody on the screen virtually, I think in 2021. Uh, and all the characters said they'd be up for it. So... We may be getting a fourth Fockers. Stay tuned.